so what will hopefully be the very last time here this season at the high banks we're back at daytona and so for anyone that is tuned in and saw the first clip you saw tragedy and some spazzing out and some uh, frustrations and some restarting and now we're back again this time it's a go we're going the full distance welcome to the shop raycon 250 to begin the championship round of brl s4 and so again let's take you through what's going on on the racetrack tonight so first and foremost we talk about our championship drivers let's talk about michael michael up front he is our defending champion and he is rocking that green number 22 monster energy chevrolet he is going to start front row dominating the series with seven wins and not eight top threes nine top fives he has failed to dnf this entire season he is looking good looking to try to repeat can frosty get it done frosty has a win ironically enough last time he won right here at daytona for the brl 500 under the lights can he do it again to get a stranglehold and a good start on the championship round remember four races no win in advance so we'll see what he's able to do he's got some fast cars behind him but we want to talk about our next chase driver that would be skitty brave skitty brave has no wins in his brl career however he's raced pretty good of late with six top fives and is looking to try to extend or to try to do something he has yet to do and that is win at any track what a great time to pull out a winning performance here to begin the final round and then the final car back in black sitting in seven black running at number nine budweiser chevrolet looking good can he contend first time in the final four what appearance will he offer we know he has been suspect at times with his performance on the racetrack will he be able to go out there and have a good run we know we have several other drivers on tab we'll talk about them in a little while my pick to win this race is actually um the 46 of skitty brave he's my favorite to come away with this win i'll talk about why later the Blitz reporter for today's race is the 23 of Pika Fury. We'll get a chance to talk to him hopefully later on if he's able to survive. Everyone approaching the star finish line. It's time to go green flag racing to start the final round for S4. BRL is green flag. got turning flipping spinning in a huge wreck on the 45 48 no damage from that however amazing how he was able oh that was skinny brave amazing how skinny brave was able to avoid that and no engine a hundred percent engine damage for the 48 he was able to survive but we're gonna have our first caution that was insane the 95 did he survive no he's got damage in that number 95 how about nba jam one of our rookies clean a little bit of transmission damage and here we go pit road is open i believe this time by leader fakes out but we should see other drivers preparing to go in and let's talk about some of the drivers that were involved in this wreck how about uh, one of the drivers pitting now how about nhra one of our rookies in the series and driving at 48 last time we saw the 48 little habibi was in it and putting on a show and now is the rookies turn first race in the series welcome into brl please survive this race hopefully he's able to do it rick and morty 
Another new face to the BRL series in that number 95, Rusty's Chevrolet. And this is his first, and we can always already tell who that car is modeled after. Can he get it into victory lane, though? That's a big question for tonight's race. NBA Jam is what I'll call them. This being funny is NPN Jam. I will just call him Jam in the number 92. And uh, he was able to get off to a decent start. Another rookie running ninth. We'll see what speed he has. Apex Blade in the number 87 Ford machine. Ford performance. Loving that paint scheme. And he is preparing to double file. And he is running in the eighth position. A lot of new faces in today's race. How will that affect the running water? So... Here's a driver to look out for extremely fast. Been able to keep up a little bit with Michael from time to time, and that is a 38. He does have a win on the season as he won at Indianapolis. Uh, no, excuse me, he won at Homestead. So even now I am front row with Michael. We'll see what effect he can have in that Chevy. Let's ride along with our Blitz reporter currently running fifth in that number 23 as we prepare to go back through the gears and get back green flag racing. Approaching the star finish line. Here we go, green flag flies and we're back racing at Daytona. And good jump. Here comes on the outside, the number nine, it looked like three wide. No, the number one, I beloved. it. Good run for him. Contact made on the bottom there. 23 gets shuffled. Can we survive a lap? Contact between the 92 and nine. And we survived a lap of green flag racing. And we see the traditional line. So let's break down what you're seeing right now. Um, get used to seeing this line of cars. Well, actually, we're, we're two by two. When they get settled, get used to seeing that line. Got a lot of laps to log in, 100 laps here at Daytona. So get used to seeing the line fall in and drivers kind of get in a rhythm and get settled in. And you're going to see them preserve what they have. Now, you might think, man, this is a boring style of racing. Just watching them all in a line running around the bottom or running around the top. I want to see them going back and forth. I want to see them battling, mixing it up. Yeah, you want to see Rex, but these guys don't, especially these chase drivers. So what are they going to be doing? They're going to be going out here. They're going to be methodical in their approach. Once they get settled, you might see some lead changes, but you see what the 38 is doing, peeking out. You see what the 22 is doing, blocking. Now they're, they're going back and forth. They're studying each other. They're learning lessons about each other. They're learning who's going to react to what. Uh, what are they going to do if Rick and Morty's in pit road right now? What are they going to do if I jump out here, if I jump out there, if I try to lead a lap? Can I pull a car? Can I push a car? All of this is being learned in the first 90 laps so that when they get inside 10 to go, they know exactly what to do and how to do it. So while you, whoa, we got a car Slow on the racetrack. Oh my goodness. And a wreck, a big wreck. A big wreck in the back. Cars flipping. Cars flipping down the racetrack. That's the nine of back in black. Who lands hard. That's a chaser. Caution flag flies again here at Daytona. And Rick and Morty merged onto the racetrack too soon. He's not DNF. 
but way too soon did he merge and cause mayhem on the track. So now the question is who was involved? A lot of drivers were able to miss that carnage, but wow, that was rough. And I know that Back in Black is not happy. I know he felt he had a legit chance to win this race here at Daytona. And it just went by the wayside uh, right here. So, I mean, that stinks. And I think uh, that's going to be a penalty for the 95, or at least a warning. Uh, one of our rookies... Uh, didn't know that rule about merging onto the track too soon and he merged right when oncoming traffic was coming and disaster well, Under our second caution of the day one thing we know for sure back in black will not Be winning this race. We'll see later on if we can get a chance to talk to him um We'll give him a chance to cool down because if I was in the driver's seat and that happened, I would not be happy about an early exit, especially when I'm fighting for a championship. So let's put things in perspective for what happens now for the nine of back in black. Um, definitely starting in behind the eight ball. Uh, he's going to get 20 points for the loading into this race tonight and a DNF so he's going to get 20 points um, at minimum he's going to be about 50 to 60 points back so it's going to be really tough for him can he win a championship from this position yes but it's going to be really hard very difficult for him uh, to be able to get that done uh, at this point in time so We'll let him cool down. So, so far in the 500, we are in this race. I'm sorry. Uh, we've had two DNFs. The 51 in uh, that little segment, you could say, of racing. And now the 9 here in the main event. Pit Road is open this time by. Now, these guys are choosing not to pit. They're, they're going through their strategy. But don't think that field strategy will not become an issue potentially in this race we've seen it on several occasions become an issue and we could definitely see it again top five so far michael leading the field bibbly bob and his rare appearance in second right now looking good frosty in third gibson fourth pika our blitz reporter running fifth So I'll tell you what, give us 30 seconds. We'll be right back after this. We welcome you back to the shop Raycon 250 here at Daytona. Just remember, if you are not already, please hit that follow button, hit that subscribe button, hit those notifications, both not only just here on Twitch for the Twitch Monster 27, but also on the YouTube side of things. Stream Monster 27. When the races leave here, they are on YouTube for your further enjoyment. Catch all of the races to this point of the BRL series and uh, even old vintage races of previous leagues. Approaching lap number 10, coming on our second restart of the race. We're down to 11 cars 
four, 13 cars started this race, down to 11. And we prepare to go green flag here in a little. There go Chevy, Toyota, Chevy, Chevy, Toyota. Top five. Here we go. Through the gears. Green flags back in the air. Oh, we got another turn. Another spin on the racetrack. That's Gibson. He spun in front of the field. He gets a little contact with some other drivers. Oh, the 95. Contact made there. Rick and Morty evolved again, and we got another caution. And this time, the 95 is done. So he's gonna lift that thing to the garage area. 95 is done, our rookie rookie showing and our first rookie to DNF tonight. And unfortunately, not gonna be able to get to the finish here. And I don't know if they know it yet. There we go. Now they do. Caution flag flies. They were racing that thing. They were running that thing. We're back under caution here again. So we've seen a lot of excitement so far in the race. Road's gonna be closed right now. You know, some people have asked, you know, in, in my leagues, uh, especially here uh, on FM7, why I turn on the uh, damage, why I have damage and the damage rules. And here's the reason why I, I value and respect the performance the racing performance on the track I want to keep that performance it's good for us to watch um, this not only just the racing the hard racing but also the strategy that goes involved in racing and I think if I were in my opinion to take off the damage would compromise that because then you have to have drivers that will um, be willing to take chances that are not realistic, not smart, and um, continue to do that. And I think that that causes issues with the quality of racing on the track. No one wants to spend, you know, 100 laps pacing around the track with no, hardly any green flag runs uh, because there's no consequences for the actions of poor racing. And so as you see, for some drivers, they have gambled, they've rolled the dice, they've made moves, but there may be three wide moves. And it's a gamble because the consequences are as back in blackface, where he is no longer racing in a chase situation. Now he is behind the eight ball. Or you, the 51 in segment one, lap one taken out um, after an aggressive move. So. There, in my opinion, having the engine damage provides consequence for action. So you're going to have to be smart. Which driver is going to be the smartest? Which driver is going to have the best ability to stay out of trouble? All of those are factors, especially in plate racing. They're factors of plate racing that I think go overlooked a lot of times. It's even, even in real life. I mean... We enjoy seeing the side-by-side -side battles, and we get puzzled when we just see them running a the line, but wrecking has consequences, and that's a part of racing, understanding those consequences, what they, what it means uh, for your team, for your sponsors, uh, for the quality of racing for the fans, and then making the decision to preserve what you have until the end. A lot of hard work 
goes into building those cars in real life. And imagine the drivers that, um, gamers that come out here and they practice this race because they're trying to win a championship. Um, the You're going to see that evident because of the ability of having good racing and people using their heads. And those that cannot do that, we see them DNF. Now we're down to 10 cars. Um, so there are consequences. I enjoy a league where there are consequences because it keeps you honest and provides for good racing. We've had some excellent racing despite having few cars on the track. We always seem to have excellent racing. So uh, that's really um, why I choose uh, to do that. Well, we're getting geared up for yet another restart. Now the question is, will these guys settle down? Put together a good run. Notice on the bottom, the 22 to 2, these guys are teammates. And they are lined up on the bottom. So this is going to allow them to get a quick jump, possibly. Remember that until 5 to go, BRL's league rule is that you cannot... You cannot lock bumpers until five laps to go in less. So, what are we gonna see? Are we going to see these drivers try to push the boundaries of that rule? Let's pay close attention and watch. Restart number three. 13 complete out of 100. Approaching the star finish line. Green flags back in the air. We're back racing at Daytona. board frosty as we are back under green flag conditions kind of feisty up front as 22 is being challenged by the 23 of pika on that high lane but now he's left out to dry as the bottom lane forms look at our rookie apex getting up there trying to lead some laps here at the raycon shop raycon 250 in that number 87 gonna have to have help though on that high side the two is he gonna leave his teammate how much are they teammates in this condition where you know obviously they're both chasing for a championship at what point do teams go out the window at least for right now not not at this point look at the 48 hadn't seen the 48 run up front in any this season since the departure of little habibi and, uh, and yet this rookie is here trying to put that 48 back where Habibi had it for so many seasons. And that is up front. Going almost three wide for the race lead. Two wide there. 22 is going to drift high. Look at Frosty up front. New leader. 
48 pushing him. NHRA proving he's got some skills to pay the bills here. Frosty being pushed up front by the 48. Take a look at Skinny Brave in the mix. He's made his way up through the field. Now he's battling with the 22. 87 has help. Skinny got up out of the back. I tell you, he needed that. Ooh. You got to be so careful about how you push here at Daytona. One bad push could be disastrous, not only for you, but for the field. And uh, we saw the rear end of that car kind of loose. Here they go down the back stretch. 45. Up to the 22 bumper. Skitty trying to make moves right now, kind of settling in with this lead draft. Apex almost shuffled out there, which could be what they're trying to do. Shuffle the, the 48 out. That's not Apex. I'm sorry. That's NHRA. Shuffle the 48 of NHRA out and then team up together as teammates to push past and then through. Frosty right now, oh! 48 sideways, hard into the wall. Hit hard in the back. And we've got all kind of wrecking in the back here. And no doubt Cochran's gonna be out. And it looks like our other rookie, the 98, 92 involved in that. NHRA the hard lick and turn and DNF out of this one. So that is not where the 48 had it last time. And uh, yet more casualties of Daytona. He's gonna be out of this race. Let's look at Apex. We saw some other cars with Carnage there. Apex is good. How about uh, Gibson on towards the back there? Gibson didn't get a part of that. He's good. Pika Fury in the 23. He got damage from that. Okay, so he is involved. He's got damage. What about Bibli Bob? Was able to avoid that in the 18. Hanging in there. Be careful. He could be a player in this one. Again, the 92 did not come out so clean. So, yet again, another caution. Slowly but surely eating away the laps here at Daytona. And so one of the questions, wow. One of the questions that uh, we were considering in the speed report that aired a couple nights ago was what could, what effect are the others going to have in this race? And you can see the effect. Oh, Beloved's DNF. Beloved was a driver involved in that, and he is DNF yet again. Back-to-back -back DNF races, not good for the one team as they struggle for momentum. Eliminated last week, and then here, very confident coming in here that he could get a top five, maybe even a win. Instead, he gets an early trip to the garage. As they uh, kind of beat and bang here. Pika trying to hang in there. At number 23. Anyway, we see the effect the others are having in this race as we lost back in black lost several other drivers in this the effect is that the unpredictability and also uh, the carnage that comes with uh, these drivers racing around each other and uh, the DNFs that come that have come with it so it's been a big deal right now Frosty up front doing what he needs to do to control the tempo of this race and he's got help Got his teammate behind him. We'll be right back after this.
All right, we're back. Pit stops ensued, you saw on your screen, so let's get a new running order. How about a uh, rookie leading this race right now? And the 87 of Apex on the front row. Next to him is going to be Michael in the 22. So it goes Michael, Apex, Gibson. Bibbly Bob continues to surface up to fourth. Doing well with that. And then Frosty rounds out a top five. And as you can see, the field just gets thinner and thinner and thinner. There's going to be a race of survival here at Daytona. Now for pitting, was it too soon? You know, many of these drivers may be trying to make it on one stop. The leaders for sure are going to try to do that. Speaking of leaders, let's get up front. Here we go. Getting ready to restart here again. And the top of your screen littered with DNF markers. Here we go. Will anyone survive this race at Daytona? Stay tuned. We're about to find out. We're back. Green flag race. Oh, caught in the middle is Apex. Not a good position as he's being split by the 38 and the 22. And the 46 is going to try to shoot the gap. No, the block by the 87 to secure his spot. He drifts back up to the middle here. Now he gets back in line, and that leaves the 38 out to dry up top. And that is how our first restarted lap is going to go. Michael, clear advantage right now, holding down the top spot. Now remember, quite a few of these drivers had to pit for damage. They're going to go a little bit longer than Michael. Michael's got to pit soon. And we'll see how that creates a ripple effect throughout the roster right now. Battle for the lead is the 38. Not a chase driver pushing the 87, a rookie. Trying to get him to the front. Look at Skinny Brave. Looking to try to take advantage. Now he's going to hop back in line here. Top side going to lose steam. Look at the push though here. And the side draft. Pushing that 22 back. Apex is going to lead this lap. What a good run here. And he's going to get down in front of this group and lead this group around. That is called a veteran move, guys, by the rookie in Apex. How will Michael respond? To that move here he comes trying to side draft pull himself to the 87 it's a no go Michael. There's Bob. Kicked out high. But as you can see, things have kind of settled down here for the most part. I think people are in survival mode now.
So let's give you a quick update as to what is going on on the track. Let's take you from up front. Let's start with Chaser's top leading Chaser right now. The 22 of Michael, no surprise there. But right now, sitting second. He started off leading some laps. Right now, he can't get past Apex, who has assumed the lead and is going to try to win it on his rookie start. Excuse me. No, he's not. We got a battle for the lead, man. Okay, so anyway, back to the 87. Or oh, back to the 22, highest finisher right now. Definitely would put him in a great position as far as the point standings go. Now, obviously a lot of racing to go. Things could change quickly, but for right now, looking good. He sits second. Skitty Brave also looking good at this point in the race, and he is uh, heading up <coughs> Excuse me, heading up pack number two. Right now looking solid. Uh, we got some laggage going on, at least on my end. I apologize about that. But uh, looking solid right now, Skitty in the perfect position to strike if there is something that happens and don't think something cannot happen it's Daytona he's in the perfect position right now and points would definitely help him out we got a car stopped in the back it's Pika what happened to him definitely a de uh, some damage to that number 23 he's got to take that thing to pit road so now the question is, I wonder if that lag had anything to do with the damage. As expected, he's going to go down pit road. We're going to go back to talking about our chasers. Michael, Skitty. How about Frosty in the final four, battling six and by himself. No drafted partner. He's going to have to hope for a caution or be, to sell, be able to get himself back in the running order. Back up front. We got a battle. So Skitty Brave has caught the 22 of Michael. The 92 rebounding nicely. He's going to try to come up here and battle. Gibson. Also uh, up here. Trying to hang on to that tail end of this uh, line right here. We saw a little battle almost for the lead. And you have to almost know, if Michael goes high, Skitty's going low. If Michael goes low, Skitty's going high. They are not going to work with each other on this racetrack. And uh, that's going to create for a very interesting storyline as this race progresses. So for Michael, who has not pitted, coming into his pit window right now, this is going to be huge for Michael and for his strategy, especially battling up front. So take a look at that fuel. Not a lot in the tank. He elected to stay out on multiple occasions. And so uh, was this the best decision for him, or is this going to come back to bite him? Uh, this is something we'll have to pay attention to see because... Uh, obviously, uh, with the lag there, well, obviously he's looking to try and uh, overcome and, and get himself in the right position for cycling. Now, he's pitting later, which means, or well, he's pitting now, these other drivers can pit later, which means when the cycle's complete, 
Uh, it'll always be a disadvantage to Michael right now. Excuse me, because of these other cautions, uh, the other drivers decided to pit. And I think that for Michael, on that last caution, I would have pitted um, and got the opportunity to get some tires and fuel uh, to be able to hang with these guys. But we'll see how it plays out. So these guys are broken away yet again from Skitty Brave here. He's struggling just a little bit holding that racing line. They are a little bit everywhere. Once they tighten up, they'll be able to catch this group. And now that lead group going to pit road. Skitty Brave decides not to. And that's going to break the, the line here and allow the 92 to assume the lead. And he's going to take the 38 with him not a good move here. Now, here's the question. Why did he make that move? That's a good question. I have no answers for you. I just know NBA Jam is in the lead. So another rookie is leading this race. When it all cycles out, this is going to be a big deal. I think for Skinny, a mistake for giving up the race lead the way he did. And uh, what I'm, I'm sure he's going to want back. These are the differences here between uh, a Final Four finalist and a champion of the series right here. Moves like this. Gibson looking good on a racetrack. Now Skitty goes in. Does he have help with him? No, and that's not Skitty. That's the 38. Gibson goes in in the 38. Skitty's going to stay out. It's going to move him to second place. Now, how aggressive will he be in trying to work around this leader? That's the next question to ask. How much does he want this lead? This is important for him as far as points and everything. So, I expect him to be extremely aggressive here. Try to get that rookie out of the lead. And then 13 seconds back is your next chaser in Frosty. So it goes Jam, Skitty Brave, Frosty, top three. Bob hanging in there in fourth. My sinuses are not playing nice today, guys. And so everybody's pretty well spread out. You think, man, you know, you got NBA Jam in the lead. You got all these drivers spread out. No way, no way there'll be another caution. And this is how it's going to end. This is the battle for the lead. And my response is, you're dead wrong. And here's the reason why. Uh, first of all, because it's Daytona. You always got a chance for a caution. And all it takes is one to bunch everybody back up. And then you are back in that position of, of running. And then you look at uh, also the fuel issue. Definitely a driver slower on the track because of fuel could bring up the caution. So, cautions could fly. Uh, yes, everyone's spread out, but 
One wrong move. Two Yodas battling it out. 18 and 23. Pika almost taking the concrete off the wall. He was so close. Ghibli Bob to pit road. Maybe a good field strategy. That's just going to leave him by himself. Let's go back up to the lead. Skitty Brave and uh, BHM. Up front. Approaching that halfway point. We'll be right back after these messages. Shot Raycon 250. We welcome you guys. We welcome you guys back.
We welcome you guys back to <clears throat> the race here. As pit stops now ensuing and the back to the lead goes the frost. Here comes Skitty Brave exiting with NBA Jam. And back up front goes Frosty. Riding on an island. Pulling up six minutes ahead. Now the problem is that Apex and Michael are actually uh, drafting with each other so and there goes Frosty so Frosty's in now All right, so we're back. <coughs> Excuse me, and uh, one thing is for sure, they've got to catch, these guys right here have got to catch Michael, and they've got to catch Apex, who returns to the lead. guys running well now they've got to hope that they've got to hope that they can cycle to a point where they are in this position late in the race right now well, roughly about two more stops or at least one more stop don't know that that's gonna happen We'll see. And then 4.5 behind them. And so here is a factor that people may not be even thinking about right now. If you see Apex riding around this racetrack, here's a factor. Fatigue. Obviously, uh, the longest green flag stretch of the race. The attire is late for some. So fatigue is definitely going to be an issue. You're riding, you've got your car behind you, that constant noise of your motor, the same pitch. Don't think it's not weighing in on these guys as they're going around uh, the racetrack here. When you're tired, when you're fatigued, what happens? You start making mistakes. And those mistakes can lead to cautions and DNFs. around the lap car of the 18. Mm 
that forward looking strong. We're back and we seem to have lost somebody on the racetrack, Bibbly Bob. And that's gonna be scored as an electronic failure. Obviously, uh, there was no incident on the racetrack to precipitate that uh, departure. So, let's see what we got going on here. Um, again, fatigue, Pika on the racetrack, trying to hang in there at number 23. And he is out of fuel. Trying to get to pit road. You heard the engine cut out. And to pit road he goes. He made it just in the nick of time. And that is obviously strategy. Run it out. Excuse me, get in the pit road. <coughs> and then be able to um, have enough fuel to last towards the end of this race. Now, while he does that, let's get you back up front because you got these leaders still right here. One, two, Michael. And Michael is trying to patiently wait it. As time ticks on, Guys, there can still be a caution, and if there is, there will still be mayhem on the racetrack. You can bet on it. And then you see where um, you've got 
Topeka exiting pit road. House the 46 navigate this quite well as they sail past the driver slower on the track. Back to Michael sitting second. <clears throat> so we'll take you through the field. Brought to you by BRL. Two pit road, these guys go. Leaders in the pit road. They went in together, looks like it was planned. Now, what does NBA Jam and the 46 of Skitty do? They stay out. Again, remember they pit it later than the leaders. They're gonna stay out and reassume the lead. Six of Skitty Brave biding his time. This could be a race winning move coming up soon. Timing the pit, pit stops correctly. <coughs> Timing his move correctly. Can he get in and out of pit road and take the lead away from NBA Jam? And look at this. 22, 387, third, fourth. So he didn't lose much time at all on pit road. And then Gibson, right in striking distance from them in fifth. And then Frosty, one of our chasers, a long way away. In the pit road. Gibson stopping for service. And laps led is going to be really, really close. No! No! And there it is, 38 DNF. That's our caution. And you saw it on your screen as he tried to exit pit road. Lost control of his car. Overcorrected. Hard into the wall. Caution flag flies. And they're still on the green here 
And there's the caution. And ouch. That was a tough lick. And driver of the 38. And like I said, it can happen. Fatigue sets in. Anything can happen. Caution flag's gonna fly. And this changes everything. What do you do? How do you plan for the pit stops? How do you plan with this last stretch? I mean, everyone technically pit now. You can go on fuel at least to the end of regulation. And if there's an overtime, then you have to reconsider. It should be interesting to watch. One of our fourth, fifth, fifth, fifth caution of the day, I want to say, uh, for the DNF of the number 38 of Pika Fury. So these guys will allow the field to catch up. And they'll open the pit road very soon. Now, as far as strategy goes, this is very, very interesting because Skiddy, cool, did they have to pit soon? Is the big question. So, NBA Jam stays out, continues to have the race lead. Pika, Frosty, Skitty, Michael, Apex, all pit. No, excuse me, I'm sorry. J Apex and Michael stay out. <clears throat> so, Skitty, Frosty, uh, both in the pit road. Well, over half the field out of this race. What's the other half going to do? Well, we'll be right back to bring it to you live. The Shot Raycon 250. Remember, anyone that, that finishes this race well gets a, a good start to a championship round. We've already lost one contender. Will we lose another one? What we'll pick us attention? Our rookies going to start front row. Uh, yeah, Gibson, I can pull it up. I didn't have it pulled up. I've been just watching the, uh, the stream, but I can pull it up here. <clears throat> okay, I have the stream up now, so anything that's posted now will be uh, refreshed in the chat, and I'll be able to see. I can't see anything before that. Okay, here we go. Approaching the star finish line yet again, another restart. Six cars, guys. Six. Don't think we can't have more carnage. Don't think we can't have another restart. Don't think we can't have quote unquote the big one. Because if you think that, then you're lying to yourself. I'm just going to tell you that straight up. Here we go. The flag waves yet again through the gears. They go. We're back racing at Daytona. And our delinquent field. Heads into turn one, side by side. Three by three. Two by two, I should say. Three rows deep. But that's all that's left. <laughs> Michael to the high side. What a move. Gonna stick with the driver that got him the speed. And that's Apex. As they try to push themselves past the bottom lane. I don't think they have enough though they're not close enough together that that outside doesn't have the steam and of course without cars it's really going to be difficult to get that thing rolling we'll see what they're able to do on the outside in the meantime nba jam with the lead and 
man. Skinny Brave. I'm sure. Oh, look. Don't look now, but look at look at the third place position. Again, I talked about it in the speed report. I mean, finding ways to get up front the two. Notice where he is now. He was a distance away or afterthought had we stayed green. Now with this restart, the good jump that he's got now, he's going to battle with Skinny Brave while Michael, his teammate, is in the second pack. Now Frosty's got to wait for help because right now he doesn't have it. Doesn't have enough steam necessarily to get by Skinny Brave unless they keep mistaking, making mistakes like that, bouncing off that apron. No, Gibson, it has not been good for you these past three weeks. Been kind of hard for you, bud. Now, I'll tell you what, though, I will say this, Gibson. These guys out here better be scared for you, uh, uh, scared to have to face you next season. I'm just let you know that now based on what I've seen. Back to the racing. Frosty right there. This second group of two coming in a hurry. We're on lap 71 of 100. 71, so 29 to go here in this race. I want to thank everyone for tuning in and staying with us here at Daytona on Twitch March the 27. The Shop Raycon 250 where we have seen a lot of carnage in this one. Uh, very few drivers compared to the last time as contact is made. Just a little tap and Frosty loosens the rear end of the 46. Now they're scrubbing just a little bit. Bumping, letting off. And that allows Apex and Michael to come back. Things are starting to spice it up on the racetrack. And not gonna lie, I'm glad they are because I was falling asleep during that green flag run. So I'm glad things are starting to spice it up. More contact. Bumping, getting harder, heavier, faster. This is a point where you don't lift. And these drivers are not lifting. Skinny knows it's time to go. They've got to move. The 92. Hogging the top spot a rookie in the series first start can he get his first win here at daytona and now frosty shuffled up high he's gonna go to the rear of this pack he's gonna dive in behind his teammate that's not a bad thing now the question is can he keep up and can they get themselves up through the field Frosty kind of losing it just a little bit. There's a little gap there. Uh, so we're going to have to tighten that up if he's going to stay with this front group. All tight uh, bumper to bumper here. On board Apex. Is they're going to peek out to the high side now. Side by side with the 46. 92's got two lanes to block now. Gotta try to take the air off the high side. Gotta take the air off the middle. Here comes the 46. Big run. What a shot. Plants that momentum right to the back of the 92. He's gonna pull away. Michael's gonna try to wedge in there. Contact made. In the meantime, now Apex gonna try to go for the lead. 92. Going to dive it off the pit road. He did not pit under that caution. The 87 assumes the lead. Look who's sitting second. And just like that, the tide turns. Exactly right, Gibson. And what an amazing run that would be in BRL. And uh, that's crazy. Look at, look at the speed here. The 22 is able to give the 87 without even making contact. And they're just able to stay in line and use that air uh, to their advantage. Now, here's the question. 
How long will Michael sit and allow other drivers to steal those laps led? How long will he sit and allow a, a non-playoff driver to sit ahead of him? Any driver, really, to sit ahead of him. And he finished second. That's not a Michael-like thing to do. So now Apex, as good as they are working together, better be prepared for that run that Michael could get to try and take the win. In the meantime, we go third place, Skitty Brave, and just like that, he goes from contending for a possible lead to now sitting here back in third. And you can see the the distance here uh, start to uh, start to mount 1.8, 1.9 seconds and counting. These guys up front are gone, and uh, that's tough. I mean really really tough for Skitty and for Frosty but this will also mean that they all finish around each other in points heading into next week's race you want to see a continuation of the BRL series tune in next week we'll be at Bugatti Le Mans Bugatti circuit for the running of that road course difficult one weather could be possible so tune in to that race next week. Same time next Friday, 11.30. Skitty Brave and Frosty. Gotta stay hooked up here. Additional help would be nice. Because they are just losing that front pack, just the speed those guys have. Sure, he wished his strategy would have played out a little bit differently because uh, didn't work out well at all for him. He's running fifth, but um, maybe if it goes green from here, but then he has to hope that he doesn't get lapped. Pika, not no hope, no hope in that number 23. Back up front. Battle for the race lead possible. <coughs> Excuse me. 22 getting a little antsy. I mean, you think about points. Every little bit counts. You got Skitty Brave and Frosty right behind you. Ooh, six hours from now. Wow. Um, let me let me think about it, um, and I will get back with you, my man. I uh, I have a lot of things going on. I'm gonna be really really busy tomorrow. But um, if I can make some time for it, I will let you know. I will let you know if I'm in. Just. I'll get back with you. Appreciate the offer. Well, the Shot Raycon 250 is coming to a close. Keep an eye on this battle right here because I think it's going to get spicy here in a little bit. I don't think it's going to stay the way that it is right now. Of course, 
uh, Michael's biding his time. Of course, he's allowing Apex to, you know, keep, take these laps led. Obviously, right now, he's not going to get most laps led. Um, okay, I'll do that. Um, but again, back to the race. Of course, he's he's not going to, uh, you know, give up these most laps led. He's just, you know. Uh, at this point, he's not getting it, so he's just taking his time, biding his time. But I'm gonna tell you something. I mean, don't think that this will not become a battle. And you can see things starting to tighten up between these two drivers now. They've been working well together all race long, but uh, Apex is is holding up our defending champion, and he knows that. He's got two drivers behind him that he is battling with. That is Michael, uh, Skitty Brave, and Frosty, his teammate. And they're running right behind him. So that extra points gap could be the difference between a championship and second place. We'll see what he decides to do. And in the meantime, Apex showing that at least at a plate track and an oval, he belongs leading a ton of laps in this race looking really strong he's had a strong car all race long able to side draft on the high side and take away lead so that forward looks really good has looked really good and uh, may continue to as time goes on approaching lap 85 of 100 guys Time is counting down, and they have built a 4.4 second lead on third and fourth. Approaching lap traffic, NBA Jam. He's gonna choose the high side here. Let's see how this goes. <clears throat> make Here we go. Laps counting down. Don't think, guys, that we can't have another caution. It is not beyond the realm of possibility. Uh, 
though at this point possibly unlikely now look at this interesting development skitty brave into pit road he took frosty with him here they come out one two so there'll be a chance to draw a uh, draft with each other So, spit, pick stops, and there go the leaders. And so now, did you see them hopping over each other and everything? Now the question is, can they come out in time? 30 seconds. Here they come. Leaving pit road as we speak apex. Giddy could not get there. They could not get there. 8.5 and counting as the 87 and 22 get up to speed. Well, laps coming to a close here. Obviously, there still could be a DNF. We understand that. But laps coming to a close here. <coughs> Excuse me. And so it looks like this is going to be the battle to keep our eye on. Michael, our defending champion in the 22. He's looking to try and capture his first win of the round. Put a stranglehold on the rest of these drivers and their opportunities to win a championship. And prepare to hoist banner number two or trophy number two. Ahead of him, a rookie. First start in the BRL series in the number 87 and proving that he could be a force to be reckoned with if given a full season. Who's going to win out? And of course, Michael has to be oh so careful with such a big lead. He has to be careful that going for that lead doesn't equal a DNF for him. So rolling the dice big time. So a lot to contemplate as you as they run around this racetrack into pit road the 23 so lap traffic out of the way Kitty Brave and Frosty still together. Laps almost complete. Here comes Michael now being a lot more aggressive, forcing Apex to block. They're going back and forth. Contact made just a little bit. <clears throat> Here comes Michael on the high side. We were wondering if he had the power, <coughs> excuse me, to overcome the Ford in front. As an old friend would say, a Ford power leading this race right now. 22 doing everything he can. Side drafting, 
pushing. Now he's side by side. This is for the race lead. Still side by side. Michael, just a touch of contact. And that kills his momentum. He's going to fall back in line, charge up, and try and do it again. So getting a look in, this laps count down here. Michael on the inside is able to move him. Michael is going to take the lead. Can he complete the pass? Yes. But now here comes the 87 right back at him. Drafting partners, that's over with now. It's records or checkers here at Daytona. Apex is trying to find a way back around Michael. Look at the power of that car. But it ends now as they try as he tries to seal the deal. Michael is able to power back past. And obviously a lot of respect there. Michael chasing a championship. A lot of respect is given here. All right, guys, we are approaching white flag. When that happens, no more cautions. And Apex battling with Michael and uh, just turning into the heated battle that I expected coming into this. All right, so who's gonna give us a white flag? Michael. White flag, no more caution. Ford Power versus the bow tie. Michael seems to have it on the bottom. Michael's gonna try and seize control, he does. Here comes the 87. Back, once again, gonna try to side draft. Gonna try to side draft around him. Entering three, side by side question can he carry the momentum 22 just a little bit faster a slight door check and it's over it's over Michael to victory lane at Daytona He's able to get it done yet again. Skitty Brave, good finish for him in the number 45, and then Frosty in the two. Good run for him, and then NBA Jam in the 92, able to finish fifth. And then uh, Pika hung in there and finished sixth place. And so now let's go ahead and have a chat or talk about our final four finalists. <clears throat> First, we got to talk about uh, Skitty. Good run for him, able to finish well. And uh, the thing about Skitty Brave is obviously his ability to get up front, lead some laps, still winless. Um, I think this would have been his best chance. Maybe he has something to prove as he goes to Lamont, 
but overall a great race. Uh, let's talk to our next driver, our rookie, um, and let's talk to uh, Apex. Of Apex Blades join us here in the post race show. Second place finish. Be sure to include your audio, man. Uh, thanks for running BRL for us today. And boy, I tell you, I thought you had it coming <laughs> into those last couple laps, man. What happened? Yeah, oh, he dead. Oh, All credit to Slay. He oh, raced Slay. me very well and very clean. Very well, so, very all props to him. Congrats, congrats to him. I know he's uh, currently in a championship uh, hunt, so. So wasn't going to race him too hard because I know I don't want to uh, uh, risk uh, uh, ruining his chances at that. His chances at that. But yeah, he got to my outside yeah, got with to my outside about with five to go. Uh, eventually got back in behind got me and in behind did me the crossover. Did the crossover. And we were side by side for a couple we're laps and then, uh, and then uh, yeah, it just yeah, coming it off just the coming off uh, the, going into uh, three on the final lap, and just a bit of desync. I got doored and I got doored. It's the end of my. The end momentum, but oh well. Momentum, but oh that's well. just for us for you. That's just for us for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you come in here? Was was this expected? Were you surprised at the type of run you had in today's race, or is this something you expected to do coming coming in to have a fast car to be up front the way you were? It's Daytona, so you can always count on just it being a wild card. So I, I was expecting to be able to have a good run. I know, with the sim damage and all, it, it just, the first, the main goal was just survive the first, uh, good half, good half we did, which was awesome. Which was awesome. Um, um, other than that, yeah, it was just, yeah, it was just head down and get on it. Get on it. Well, I do appreciate you joining us for today's race and uh, we uh, appreciate seeing you battle up front very cleanly and uh, we get our drivers up here to get a chance to get interviewed we get them out of here with the question who you got to thank I got to thank the sponsors uh, Apex, Apex Gaming, Gaming and uh, Ford Performance and, uh, Ford Performance. and uh, uh, Twitch.tv Twitch uh, slash Apex uh, Blade 87. Apex Blade 87. Uh, uh, no, drop the 87, uh, no, sorry. Drop the 87, sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate you, man, and we look forward to seeing you maybe sometime in the future. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank Had a lot of fun. Much. Had a lot of fun. That was the driver of the 87. Apex Blade, our rookie in the series. First race, second place finish. Not bad. But, as usual, <clears throat> we have to talk to the guy that just seems to get it done in all the big moments. And we also got to talk to the guy that, of course, is at the bottom of my friends list and never appears online. Give me about 45 seconds while I scroll through this entire list to get to this guy. I'm going to hack it to his Xbox and change his gamer tag to something with an A so that I can just go and invite him when I please without having to try to find his name amidst all of this. This is chaos. And I think today he's appearing online. How about that? How about that? There he is. Sheesh. All right, here, joined by our winner of today's race, Michael. Not surprised. Mm. Take us through this race for you. 
Um. Um. Fine. Interesting start. Interesting all the crashes, all the flips. Why did I start with the front? I have to avoid it. Uh, as the pack turned out, you saw it actually drop. Well, then I just kill you in every corner. And then came down to the tandem of the best, and I found the best, and I poured, poured, poured. You know, the, at, at one point, what, at what point did you decide, hey, it's time for me to go for it? I know that you rode behind, you know, the 87 for most of the race. At what point did you say, hey, okay, it's time for me to go and try to get this thing? Uh, our cruise was, uh, was 10 to go. It's a matter of pick your shot. Pick your like shot. Cruise until 10 to go and then add 10. Took your shot and go, and I decided at round five I was gonna go. Well, that definitely makes a lot of sense as when we saw the intensity pick up. Well, you definitely uh, have the lead now in points. Uh, you feel a sense of relief coming out of this race, headed back to the road that you can back up this championship, or do you still think you have work left to do? You know, with Frosty and, and Skinny Brave, close in points behind you. Uh, uh, this really cool guy one really time said, guy "Job's not finished." Job. That seems about accurate right now. About accurate right now. You know, can't celebrate just can't yet. Celebrate just yet. On to some of my better on tracks. Some of my better tracks. Still got to close it out though. Still got to close it out though. All right, Michael. Who you got to thank, man? You know the deal. <laughs> uh. Uh, Harley SXR. Harley SXR. Giving me a race one car again. Race one car again. <coughs> and mostly you, because you just mostly have to deal with a bunch of not so smart not people so on the track. Yeah. You know, the thing about that is, you know, you, you invite rookies in, you have to get to know them and understand their driving style and Especially a track like this, sometimes it means that people are gonna pay the price. Um, and it's it's circumstances you look at it, it's easy to get frustrated at certain things that happen on the track, so cooler has prevailed in tonight's race, but we appreciate the performance you put on and and uh, certainly we'll see if you can back up championship number two. Step one's out of the way, win Daytona. You got three more races to win. Let's see if we can get it done. Guys, that was Michael driver at number 22. And, well, another race win. So, what does that mean? Well, that means that Michael can breathe a sigh of relief. Not that he's moving on, but again, like you heard him say in his interview, he does have work to do. And we'll see more of that action next Friday at 11.30 Eastern where we'll see if his work, if he can get it done at Le Mans. And um, what this series, what the field's gonna have prepared for him headed into that racetrack. Obviously we know anything can happen and, uh, and will happen. Be sure to tune in Tuesday night, 11.30 Eastern, Tuesday or Wednesday night. Just be ready, have the notifications on. For the update for the points and the speed report, we'll break down what happened here at Daytona and we'll prepare you for the next upcoming race. Until then, this has been Sam Cook from the broadcast booth here on Twitch Marshall 27, thanking everyone for joining us for tonight's race. We'll see you next week. <laughs>